So it's been 10 weeks, or about two and a half months, since I first got my hands on Samsung's Galaxy Note 10 Lite. And after some extensive usage, I want to talk to you about some new experiences I've had, and share some insight on whether or not the Note 10 Lite is the phone to go with, considering all of Samsung's other mid-range offerings here in 2020, and as more affordable smartphones in general continue to be a much more desirable option as time progresses. Let's get started. So starting with that affordability in mind, and what makes the Note 10 Light such a worthy consideration. Price. At the time of this video, the Galaxy Note 10 Lite, which comes in red, black, and this glow color here, and in configurations of 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, is around $470. You are getting some serious value for your money here. In exchange for that price, you are getting a 6.7 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display, a 4500 mAh battery, which is the largest battery in any Note device to date, a very good camera experience with all of the features and functionalities you need, and we have a lot of small things going right here, like the small hole punch cutout for the front-facing camera, which barely intrudes with your content consumption or any use of the phone in general, very slim bezels, and a headphone jack which officially ceases to exist on any new Samsung flagship. Take a look at the awesome colors this phone puts off in the right light, and from a visual standpoint, you may have a hard time seeing how this phone only costs a fraction of the flagship counterparts. But it's worth noting that while this Note Note 10 Lite surely holds the Note name, its looks and overall design are quite different. The biggest difference are the rounded corners and display found on the Note 10 Lite, opposed to the usual squared off or rectangular design found on the Note 9 and Note 10 Plus shown here. This may be a welcomed change of pace for consumers outside of the loyal Note fan base, as they no longer have to sacrifice the universal smartphone form factor in order to gain the S Pen. Something else that could be considered a gain depending on your preferences, is the lack of a glass back here on the Note 10 Lite. A glastic or highly polished plastic material is found here on the Lite, and a huge thanks to you guys for making it known in previous videos that this is something actually preferred and sought after by many consumers, opposed to the glass-backed phones we are mostly accustomed to seeing here on YouTube. Now you might think this makes for a cheaper feeling phone, but it is anything but that. The aluminum sidings give the Note 10 Lite a very solid feel, and the phone phone overall is a bit heavier than other phones I've reviewed in this price range. Also like Samsung's other mid-range phones, the Note 10 Lite lacks any IP, water, and dust resistance certifications. But again, a big thank you goes out to the viewers out there who took the time to share their personal experiences and pointed out that lack of official certification doesn't mean these phones can't handle some abuse. Should you find yourself getting caught in the rain or accidentally dropping your phone where it shouldn't be dropped, your device still has has a chance of making it out alive. But what else is missing here to get this device to its more affordable price point? It's less than you might think or even notice in day-to-day -day use. The main difference you will find on the Note 10 Lite over something like the Note 10 Plus is a less powerful processor, which in this case is the Exynos 9810. But as soon as I took this phone out of the box, I could already tell it was very responsive and has worked great since then. Paired up with 8GB of RAM, everything I've thrown at this phone has been handled well, and when it comes to daily usage, you will certainly not be disappointed. The in-display fingerprint reader is a bit slower than the ones found in flagship counterparts, but is a difference like this really worth several hundred dollars? Think again. I also use face recognition to unlock my Note 10 Lite and never have issues with quickly getting to the home screen. Now, a minor issue I must mention is that this Exynos chipset has been giving me less battery life compared to similar devices like the Galaxy A7 which houses a Snapdragon processor. The A71 has the same battery capacity, same screen size and resolution, same amount of RAM, alongside many other similarities. But the Snapdragon 730 found in the A71 seems to give better battery life, enough to the point where I mentioned in a recent review that it could potentially get you into a second day of usage, whereas one full day of use on the Note 10 Lite usually leaves me around 20% at 9pm. There is certainly no issue with this on its own, the 4500 milliamp hour battery will easily get you through a day of heavy use, which is expected and required for a Note device. It's just not the best among several phones I've used and reviewed with similar battery capacities and Snapdragon processors opposed to the Exynos. All things considered though, battery is rarely an issue considering the Note 10 Lite supports Samsung's 25 watt super fast charging technology, which charges you up to 50% in a half an hour and near to 
full after an hour. No wireless charging here isn't really missed considering the quick charging speeds when plugged in. The last of the compromises you'll find here is a single bottom firing speaker opposed to the dual speaker setup you'll find on more expensive devices. But again, in day-to-day -day general use, especially when watching YouTube, I found myself forgetting that there was only the single speaker opposed to a dual speaker setup. And as I mentioned before, it's a difference you can easily live with when considering how much money you are saving. Now an area without any compromises, to my surprise, are the cameras. I say that because this is the least aggressive looking camera square I have seen all year with a smaller footprint while also sitting flush against the back of the phone, which is a great change of pace from the gradual growth of camera modules from Samsung and other manufacturers here in 2020. But don't let size fool you. This camera array is packing everything you need with a great primary lens in addition to having a telephoto 2 times lens and a wide angle lens. Both are present here in the Note 10 Lite, which can't be said for other popular phones in a higher price bracket. I'm looking at you, iPhone 11 and Pixel 4. Now, of course, the main reason you consider purchasing this phone is the S Pen. Physically, this is the same S Pen you'll find on the flagship notes, which is great to see this pen become available to many more consumers to use and enjoy. Note taking and taking advantage of the many on screen shortcuts is a great experience. You will not, however, have access to the new air gestures introduced on the new Note 10 series. But honestly, I never used those features anyway. Everything I've loved using the S Pen for in the past is still here, especially the Smart Select option, which lets you grab a portion of your screen and do essentially whatever you want with it, whether that's pinning it to your home screen to reference to something else, or extracting text and copying that to wherever it needs to go, or simply drawing or writing over what you cropped, which I am demonstrating here to show you that only 2.5% of you are subscribed to my channel. To the other 97.5% of you out there watching this video, please do consider subscribing to the Shane Simons YouTube channel for more videos just like the one you're watching right now. One of my other favorite features is highlighting text by holding down the S Pen's physical button and dragging, especially when web browsing because anything you highlight can then be searched in a separate tab. It makes it that much easier to quickly look something up as soon as you see it and it's the little experiences like this that make the overall experience enjoyable and worth buying into. The S Pen is great for gaming too, as I much prefer using the S Pen opposed to my fingers in some mobile games so that I can see what my character is doing or have the ability to tap an area of the screen more precisely. And again, it's the little things like this that can't be found with many other smartphones on the market that make the Note 10 Lite a desirable option. So with all things considered, and after 10 weeks of usage with the Note 10 Lite, can I recommend it? Most certainly, yes. It is currently sitting at around $90 to $100 more than the very similar Galaxy A71, but that additional $100 can potentially be justified with the extra processing power, added camera functionality, aluminum sidings, and the S Pen, of course. If you don't see yourself using the S Pen all too much for even the basic use cases I presented in this video, then definitely consider the A71. I will have a video linked in the corner here if you'd like to learn more about it. But as far as Note comparisons go, since I know loyal Note users usually stick with just Note devices, my thoughts are this. If you have the Galaxy Note 9, stick with it as it is holding up very well here in 2020. And when you're looking at the Note 10 Plus, it is really a completely different device despite similar naming, and the price difference is too high to make it a worthwhile consideration in this matchup. Overall, I'm really happy with everything the Note 10 Lite has to offer at this price point. But what are your thoughts on the Galaxy Note 10 Lite? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the Shane Simons YouTube channel today and hitting that bell icon for notifications. I hope to see you around for the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.